That's right, although I will not be keeping it thanks to a reliable contact of mine, I've been able to get my hands on an RX 6700 XT for review. A card that I thought was important to review, just make sure it lives up to the hype. I mean, I leaked it months before, but you can talk about something as much as you want without actually testing it to see if it lives up to the hype in person. That's just a blind spot. And the same goes for the RTX 3070, which impressed me more than I expected it to. Now, I've been able to gain access to a 6700 XT, specifically an Asus one, the dual model, which I gotta say, for a dual fan mid-range graphics card, this thing is ridiculously huge. Too big, honestly. I almost couldn't fit it into a test system. Luckily, I could. Uh, but the fact is this thing is needlessly bulky for absolutely no extra cooling capacity or heat sink size. This is bigger than my Radeon 7, and it doesn't have three fans. It's just one of the most inefficiently designed cards I've ever seen. But then again, maybe Asus insisted on having only two fans because two fans means double the fun. And joking aside, I want to be clear that I'm not holding that against the 6700 XT, especially the reference model that is perfectly well designed for the performance, the amount of space it takes up. I'm only making a point that a lot of the AIB cards I'm looking at now seem to offer lower performance, as you're about to see, than a 3070 in a lot of scenarios, while well, being twice as big for, again, I don't know why, it's not like it's any quieter than my 3070. Yeah, I don't, that's a whole other can of worms. Listen to the NFC episode if you want to hear me and some of my friends' opinions on what's going on with how big graphics cards are now. I would argue needlessly, like, what, what's the point of this fan shroud just sticking out this much? In I don't want to get into it, people. Yeah, anyway, so after the 3070 impressed me, right, with its performance, but let me down with its amount of VRAM that truly, even in games years ago, was not enough even for 1440p, I wasn't sure what to expect. I mean, I know some people would say this isn't really a 3070 competitor. I would disagree. This is 100% a 3070 competitor now. It's clear AMD was going to charge somewhere between 380 to 430 for this and probably clock it a little lower, make it more of a 200-watt card. But the second they saw what they could sell this for if they made it 5%, 10% stronger and pushed it to the limits, that's what they did. So whether it beats the 3070 or not, this is a 3070 competitor. It's selling for about the same price as a 3070, and they at least bill it as a 3070 killer in their cherry-picked benchmarks. But yeah, you know what? Let's just, let's just stop wasting time, huh? Let's get into the quantitative benchmarks, which just a reminder, I'm not Hardware Unboxed. I'm not Gamers Nexus. I do a handful of benchmarks that I can replicate reliably to set a baseline, but this isn't where you go to to see 50 different games. This is where you go to to see me quantify first that the thing's working correctly, how it compares to the other cards I have access to, and then I go through my general impressions after using it for a week or two. Let's get into that. Now, I'm not going to resummarize all of the cards that I used to test. It'll be self-explanatory on the charts, and you can rewatch that explanation portion of the 6800 XT if you want to know about all of the other cards that I used to compare against this. What I will do is bring up overclocking quickly, which is to say, just like the 6800 XT, Rayon Wattman was incredibly easy to use. Zero bugs. In, I mean, overclocking is just not as hard as it used to be. Crank up core frequency, crank up memory frequency, turn down the memory timings, up the power limit, and... Bob's your uncle, you're done. The 6700 XT is done being overclocked. I did a slight voltage drop, and I didn't notice really any difference in performance going between like 1100 to 1200 uh, millivolts. I just left it at 1150. It did crash if I went below around 1000, so it was definitely doing something. But yeah, I'd say just out of the box, this card, at least for me, just crank everything up. You can probably just not touch voltage, and you'll be fine. Although it is worth mentioning that this thing boosted to, instead of its stock, 2300 megahertz, with these settings, it was boosting to about 2650 to 2700 megahertz, not the 2800 megahertz I was able to achieve sometimes on the 6800 XT. So there's maybe some power limit there holding it back, to be entirely honest. But anyways, let us get into the benchmarks. Deus Ex Mankind Divided. This one is pretty typical in performance relative between the 3070 and 6700 XT, but not typical in the 2080 Ti. This game loves Turing. And yeah, I mean, look, you're going to see this a lot, though when we're talking about the 3070 and the 20, the 6700 XT. At stock, 
3070 wins. When you push the 6700 XT, it pulls ahead. But if I push my 3070, it pulls back ahead. And you can see this as well, except even more in favor of NVIDIA with Metro Exodus, where the 3070, even when my 6700 XT was overclocked, stayed ahead. I'm sure if I used Afterburner, I could have pushed the 6700 XT a little further. But, you know, look, I think one of the main benefits of AMD's Wantman is you don't need to download third-party apps. You don't need to worry about some other program popping up in the background. You know, if I were to keep the 6700 XT, I would just use Wattman. And let us move on. Far Cry 5. Again, what are we seeing here? 3070 slightly wins stock to stock and maintains the lead when overclocked. And they're both next to a 2080 Ti. And then Strange Brigade. This one really liked the 3070 when I pushed memory. Uh, and I mean, I don't know what else there really is to say about that. It also really loves Vega. But again, I've found this in my testing for years that Strange Brigade really, man, does Vega do well relative to other cards. No need to dwell on that. As we move on to the Division 2, where again, what are we seeing? 3070 slightly stronger. You push the 6700 XT, it's a 3070, but then you can push the 3070 further yet again. And on average, relative to a 2080 Ti, the 6700 XT is a hair below it. If you push it, it's right up there with a 3070 and a 2080 Ti. Even in 4K and 1440p, the lead shrinks or it wins in a couple games now. But, you know, if you overclock both cards in 4K, the 3070 is solidly in the lead over an overclock 6700 XT. And even in some limited testing I did on the side in 1440p, I would say the 3070 photo finish wins on average, but not in all games anymore. And you'll see that in the qualitative benchmark. So yeah, there it is. Full stop, it did not match the 3070, even after I overclocked it. And I want to be clear, that surprised me. I expected more trading of blows with the 3070 than what I saw. Yeah, look, I put it in the same tier of performance. It's about 2080 Ti, about 3070 performance. And 1440p, I'm sure it trades blows more. But, you know, I test in 4K now because I think it's pretty easy, even with this card, to run above way above 60 hertz in 4K with reasonable settings. So... Yeah, it, it just isn't in raw rasterization as good as the 3070. And it's not just in those quantitative benchmarks either. During gameplay, whether it was Mountain Blade, you know, it performed a little worse than a 3070. Or Deep Rock Galactic, a little worse than a 3070, even after overclocking. Or Resident Evil 2. In, in 4K in Resident Evil 2, it actually seemed to perform a solid 10% or more worse than the 3070. Well, except for one big benefit of the 6700 XT. In some scenes like that main room there in the police station, it would take about a minute before the frame rate started falling apart in 4K. And even sometimes in 1440p, that never happened with this. So, well, I can just honestly say I consider this to be about 10% weaker in raw rasterization compared to the 3070. There it is. There's your proof. It could actually technically game better in 4K and even sometimes 1440p. A lot better because it actually has enough VRAM. That's an important point. You know, the fact of the matter is I've decided to keep the 3070 because it is really good at editing and encoding and, you know, exporting video. But if you're a pure gamer, it's, it's a complicated story. Although more complicated by the fact that something's gone on with AMD's drivers for professional apps. Now, this still probably exports and renders about half as fast as my 3070, at least in the apps I use, but it's way better than it was when I tested the 6800 XT. I don't think it's just the app's been updated to better utilize the newer architecture. I think clearly AMD's updated something in the drivers as well. There are no artifacts in my uh, video editing apps anymore. That was a problem in some of the apps is that there would literally be artifacts. I just couldn't use the graphics card at all. That's gone. So while it's not as good as Ampere, I can no longer say that it's horrible or not an option. If you're a creator gamer, I now think RDNA 2 seems to work fine, at least in the apps I use. But again, Ampere is just still overall better if you're a creator. Unless you need a ton of VRAM. And speaking of VRAM, I have heard that as of now, AMD plans to put just 6 gigabytes, at least on some models of the RX 6700 non-XT. But I've also heard that that thing's not coming out anytime soon, and I can see why. I don't know what you do with a 6 gigabyte card in this market anymore. Like, even if it performed 
the same as this. It's it's not enough RAM. Eight gigabytes isn't enough, and six gigabytes isn't nearly enough. So just keep that in mind. Whenever that comes out, don't expect me to go easy on AMD if they give it six gigabytes. I don't even know what they would price it at. I think it just makes more sense because if we assume the 6700 non-XT uh, is about, I don't know, 5% stronger than a 5700 XT, I would assume just give it 12 gigabytes and make it even just 399 saying... Hey, it's slightly stronger than the 5700 XT and it has more RAM for the same price. I'm not saying that's what I want to happen. I'd like it to be $300, but that's kind of what I expect AMD to do. And then at three, I don't know, 20, they put a six gigabyte model. I don't know. I don't know what you price a six gigabyte 6700 at, even if it would obviously blow away the 3060. Six gigabytes just isn't enough. Just like I don't think eight gigabytes is enough, but 12 gigabytes is enough. And that's what makes this an interesting option versus a 3070 which well yeah that's let's just get into the final thoughts then in my 3070 review i said that i was frustrated i was frustrated because i was far more impressed with the ga 104 die performance itself than i expected that card had no problem doing 4k 100 or higher in multiple games and i had no doubt that if they would have just given it 16 gigabytes of faster memory This could have been the ideal high-end card, even at about $600. It's not that far behind the 6800. And, I mean, maybe that's what the 3070 Ti will be, but all evidence is that we'll still have 8 gigabytes. So, it's just not what I want, you know. And I can say similar things about the 6700 XT. This isn't meant to be a 3070 competitor. It is weaker, even when pushed I think at a TDP 10% at least higher than what AMD initially intended, but it was pushed so they could sell for a higher price because people will buy what's ever on store shelves. Just like in an ideal world, the 3070 would have 16 gigabytes. In an ideal world, this would really probably be a $400 graphics card. They didn't require heavier cooling, but we don't live in an ideal world. The 3070 is not a 16 gigabyte card as strong as the 6800. And the 6700 XT is not a true 5700 XT replacement in terms of price. So, if if in this imperfect world you're making a decision and you're looking at the $500 or, let's be honest, probably closer to $600 or higher, 3070, or you're looking at the $20 cheaper or most likely almost the same price, RX 6700 XT, which one would you buy? <sighs> If, if you're a pure gamer, the 3070 is basically 5 to 10% better for 5 to 10% more money, but it has less VRAM. So if you're a pure gamer, don't even take into account overclocking. This thing's pushed pretty hard out of the box. I would just say I would give a photo finish to the 6700 XT, a photo finish. But it does depend on the games because there are some games like... Uh, Resident Evil 2, where if it had enough VRAM, it clearly would be at least 10% better than the 6700 XT, even when the 6700 XT is overclocked. And if you're a creator like me, it's really a non-discussion. It's a non-discussion. This thing encodes like twice as fast as this, at least in the apps I use. Even now that this is fully utilized by the app, it's still not as good as Ampere, even remotely. So, you know, like, like that ZDG2 video I did, this... 3070 can do it in about nine and a half minutes. This one took over 15 minutes. And that's money is time here when I'm trying to put out multiple videos in a week sometimes. So if you're a creator at all, or there's a specific game that you know uses the 3070 better, that's what I would recommend. But otherwise, if you're a pure gamer, and I know there are some games that favor the 30, the 6700 XT, the extra VRAM matters. It matters a lot. I have multiple games from two years ago even in 1440p that run into VRAM issues if you only have 8 gigabytes. 8 gigabytes really should just be reserved for sub, well, really sub $300 cards now, I would argue, to be honest. And 12 gigabytes should be the gold standard below 600 at least. But that's not what we, the world we're in. You have to make decisions. And I guess right now the decision I would say for pure gamers is the 6700 XT. And if you do literally anything else or it's less money, somehow you get maybe this at MSRP, then it's the 3070 that you want to get, I guess. But, well, that's how it is. And that's about all I can say for this graphics card. This graphics card will now be going to Dan, who needs to replace an aging card that's falling apart finally. And uh, I'm really grateful to the people that helped me get a hold of this. Again, 
I did not pay scalper prices. I have not scalped any of the cards that I've received for review. Yes, I sold my old Vegas for what they're selling for on eBay, but I didn't plan to do that. I just did it because I'm moving in. Look, the money was much better spent on upgrades to the channel than it is having a $2,000 Radeon 7 lying around. So I guess that's the final thing I will say as well. I have a couple of friends recently who managed to get 6,700 XTs or 3070s for close to MSRP. Keep checking. Don't give in to scalper prices because I could see the price collapsing sooner than you think. Um, you don't want to be the guy who paid $1,000 for a 6,700 XT the last month it was selling for that much on eBay. That's my advice. That's my review of the 6700 XT. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm really glad that I've had some time to look into the recent architectures. I've got one more card that I want to do a big review on that should be coming up in about a month or so. And uh, yeah, remember to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell button so you don't miss that. Don't miss the leaks that I put out recently or the opinion pieces. Remember to listen to, remember to, listen to Broken Silicon. You can subscribe to it on a podcast app. And if you like our content, remember the patrons make this possible. You get exclusive ad-free uh, podcasts, sometimes videos, and the ability to ask guests on Broken Silicon questions every week, exclusive content. So if you have the extra money, consider supporting us there. And as always, it's time to stop rambling. Thank you for watching. <laughs>